Clara, sometimes I wish you knew less. Huh? Sometimes I wish you knew less. <laughs> No se llama la yes, última cena. The last supper. The, the, yes. the last supper. Yes, yes. And there was wine. wine. So he was drinking of wine. Of which that is not wine. And it's I alcohol. am not Jesus. It's all the same. It's <laughs> alcohol. If he did it, you did it. That's it. You're good. No, you repent. Clara. You repent, you'll be fine. No, that's not how it works, Claire. It's exactly how it works. No. And also, repentance is not something that's easy to just grab. <laughs> oh, let me buy it. Let me Amazon Prime repentance. <laughs> no. The whole point is that it's something that's hugely transformational. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta be careful. I feel like my titties are gonna knock someone out. <laughs> okay. That's funny how you say this is a negative, but like, <laughs> men will could kill for this shit. <laughs> no, one won. And yet, you know what I was thinking the other day? Like, how am I gonna be? Oh, two things. Okay. Naked in front of a man and. Not feeling special. How are you not going to feel special in front of a man? That's literally their duty. First of all, those are two different topics. You blended them, and that's a great topic. <laughs> and that, my friend, is how you and I <laughs> work differently. But no, no, no. The ideas, the oh. idea machine. What you and I need to do is learn how to make our ideas money because we have ideas. <laughs> we need idea. We we just need execution. Okay. Okay. okay let's get this started. Um, wait. Uno, dos, tres. You got it? You got it. Boom. Let's go. Let's get it started. Ha! Let's get it started. In here. And I'm not a. Ha! Let's get it started. In here. Okay. And here we go. Seven minutes of wasting tape. Let's go. <gasps> Ooh. Hey, Father. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. So, what story are we getting into this week? <gasps> Fun! A new book! Okay, call back later. <gasps> you guys, this week, we're diving into a brand new book. We are going to dive into the book of Prophet Habakkuk. Ooh! Welcome to another episode of Bible Stories with me, Brianda. Brianda. Hi. I'm here with my ride or die, with my work wifey, <laughs> with my everything, with my besticle, breasticle. Ooh, I am serving breasticle today, uh, but also Clara. La Clara NYC, everybody. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Honestly, I don't know what it's 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 giving, it's a lot, it's a lot of chest which is why I'm going to return this dress. Um, it's, it's, I, I wasn't quite, I didn't know. You're going to see me doing this a lot, guys. I'm so sorry about that. But it just feels like my tetas are about to uh, tell the Bible stories. <laughs> yeah. So anyone who always says that I'm a Jezebel, I guess you're right. I'm not, by the way. No, you're not. You're, you guys are all mean. She was no, an evil you're woman. Not. Uh, but yeah, no, this dress is not the most comfortable, but I feel you. It looks great on you, but I understand what you mean though. Yeah. I know when it, you don't feel like it's also backless and I just feel like you can't one of my girls are going to pop out and say hi. <laughs> I mean, Hey, let's turn these views up. Now don't honestly. Yeah, we should. The views have been going <laughs> down, man. The views have been going down. Maybe, you know, maybe the left one has a plan that I don't know about. <laughs> Maybe, it's maybe like, she's holy, right. Holy Spirit, no, I'm just <laughs> Oh, no, you guys, blaspheme, blaspheme. Hello, welcome to another episode. It's us, your girls, your favorite Bible babes. Um, I just want to let y'all know that we just finished recording an episode of our other baby makeshift. Uh, we're still figuring it out podcast on the Patreon. Go over to the patreon.com, you know, forward slash Bible Brianda if you want to check out uh, exclusive content, whatever. And we just recorded an episode where I asked Clara... Mm. Ahead of our uh, uh, episode 80, which we all know is an ongoing gag, that's when she's going to find Jesus. Uh, I asked her, like, what has she learned from the past, you know, 50 some odd episodes that she's been doing the podcast? She gave a very, very illuminating and insightful answer. And if you guys want to hear what she thought, head over to the Patreon because I'm obviously not going to give it to you now. Yeah, right. But uh, well, you, it though. was really interesting to see you talk about that, Clara. I kind of learned, I learned something new. 
and we're new friends, yeah. right? So, and it's very hard making new friends as an adult. Like you guys are, I mean, I'm 29, yeah. you're, you know, we're both, 33. we're both in our thirties, right? Yeah. Basically. And it's hard to make new friends. It's especially hard to make like uh, rich, like bonds. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And every so often you see, I've said this before, like, I just feel like I'm fall. It's like falling in love with your friend. Like, it's a friendship. It's oh, new. Yeah. Is it like man calling bromance? What's yeah. us? Cease men? Exactly. Whatever. Yeah. And hearing your answer was so, I just remember thinking while you were answering, I was like, oh, she's such an insightful, thoughtful, curious, mm. um, kind hearted individual. Stop. And anyway. We said we don't cry on camera. Okay. I know. Yes. But it was really cool. It was really cool. And. In my head, if I'm friends, if someone that great could be friends with me, I can't be half bad either. It kind of like, it's like a reflective thing. Fair or maybe enough. that's a narcissist in me where I'm like, oh, no, I, can't. I must not be that bad. Um, but yeah, you're really special. I mean, I don't have bad friends. If you're not good quality, I'm not friends with you. So that should tell you something. I know. The other day I was just thinking like, I've had so many, what so many? Let me remove that. I've had a couple, which would be more appropriate, friendships go to the wayside. Mm -hmm. And every so often I like to reflect back on them and see uh, maybe what I could have changed. Not to the change same, the result, yeah. but where maybe where I held some responsibility in the demise of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And it... If it catches me on the bad day, if it catches me on my period week, sometimes I'll be like, you know what, I am such a piece of shit. Like, oh hell, no. but no, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, no, no. But on the right week, it's like, no, we evolved to be different people, and that was what was supposed to happen, and mm -hmm. that's okay. And I'm so grateful for the friendships that I do have now. I don't know. And I'm happy you're my friend. I'm happy you're my friend. Oh, no, I'm so sad that you're going to be leaving me. They know this. Yes, they okay. do know this. But like, I feel like it's not that. Do they know this? That you're going to be know moving? This? Well, if you listen to the Patreon, you know this. Yeah, if you watch the Patreon podcast. Damn it. Listen, for $6 a month, you can know about this. <laughs> um, you get four new episodes a month. It's a fun time. Yeah. But um, Clara's moving to LA. Yeah. She's going to run the... She's going to studio manage the WTF Media Studios in Hollywood, in Los Angeles. That's part of what I'll be doing, but yeah. Part of, yes. You also have your other jobs. Mm -hmm. You also, you're going to keep up your nails stuff yeah. and, but you're not going to be in New York full time. And no, I'm but I feel that. Devastated. <laughs> Stop. Devastated. I feel like for you, like for us, we do hang out outside the podcast sometimes, but like for us, I'm still going to be seeing you to record the podcast regardless. I know. So it's like instead of every week, it's going to be every two weeks. And I know it's not the same because I miss you sometimes too, like when we don't record so often. Oh my God, we're so cheesy. I know. Okay, whatever. Like, I know. We'll be fine. I miss you. The atheist misses her Bible friend, <laughs> you guys. Episode 80, there's still hope. <laughs> September 14th is the date. September 4th. I repeat, alarm, alarm. <laughs> you guys, grab your hats. Clara. September 14th is the episode 80, everyone. What's coming? <laughs> and then on episode 80, I said, I'm going to come in with a graduation outfit for you. But let's, let's, I'm going to, and I'm going to ask you the gonna question. Just like Christ or something. I'm like, going to ask you the question Do you take Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? No. And she's going to be like, You're going to be really disappointed in my answer. <laughs> I still have hope. But I mean, it is what it is, y'all. It is what it is. <laughs> and you can lead the horse to water. You know how that thing goes. <laughs> Anyways, um, what was it? What else is there to talk about, Clara? I don't know. When was it? I was with Wheezy one time and we had to look for something blue. She wanted to buy something blue. And on our way to the store, I could only see blue cars, blue signs blue houses like when you, it's like your subconscious is fixated in it that's all you see and that's you're i know you're eager to like fulfill your christian side of marriage and you know like find no your forget about that no i'm eager to find someone no i view you guys clara's <laughs> doing mannerisms that are inappropriate <laughs> for the show no clara i just 
So, <clears throat> Lord, maybe we should do episode 100. <laughs> I am so sorry. I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> you could lead the horse to water or the horse could be a whore. <laughs> Anyways, yes. Uh, <clears throat> um no, I just want it's like something else. It's like a different it's a different thing. And also, I hate being in the um not hate. It's uncomfortable for me to be in the uh uh, uh the not, oh, the yearning, that yearning stage. Normally I'm someone that fights for what she wants or like mm -hmm. does something to work towards what, like whatever it is, yeah, even the proactive. most unattainable things. I mean, look at the industry I've tried to go into. Mm -hmm. High risk, low reward. But yeah. even then I try, try at it. This is something that I can't, it, it seems like I can't even control that so it's like i think that's adding to the obsession it's like man what the heck and the older i get it's even harder mm. like men don't look at me the way they used to when i was in my early 20s I older. exactly when i was in my early 20s i had to f wipe men off of me now i'm trying to stick walkie talkies in their pockets and see if <laughs> i can have a conversation with them later <laughs> you know <gasps> it's tough anyways <gasps> Also, no, but I would say, like, also most men your age are starting to, like, either get in, like, relationships. Like, they're not as available as well. And also the hormones. Let me tell you, the men of your age, which is, I would assume, <laughs> the men that you're looking at, hmm. roughly. Yeah. Like, around, a little older, maybe, but, like, around I lowered age. my age on Hinge. I lowered <gasps> it. I know. From I what to what? 80 so to now, 70? No, no, no. No. What? <laughs> Clara, no, that was last year. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but last year I was dating guys in their 40s and 50s. I was into it. Okay. But, and I was genuinely into it. I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. really do. And I still do like older men. I just know that I, it's not, the, it's not what, I would like to like tailor making like curate what I want for my family. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to spend as much time as possible with, my children right. so it's strictly that i can but see, if that wasn't the case i'd be with a 50 year old man i can say like i don't personally feel attracted to older men but i do feel attracted to matureness so i can see and for most men it comes very late yeah so i can see why someone would be attracted to older you know it's they're they're, they're really great they really are great they're they're the most they, they're like well traveled and like we 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 talk about movies and books and music in ways that like I don't really relate to with younger guys, but I doesn't matter because I know what I I, I already said it. Anyways, the the spectrum is twenty seven mm -hmm. to thirty eight. I put it under. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And that's let's wish me luck. <laughs> so wait, now it's twenty the seventeen. Twenty seven. Seventeen. <laughs> Clara, please, <laughs> please. Did you hear that R. Kelly escaped prison? What? Anyways, what were you saying? You were saying something until I Oh no, I completely it. lost it now. Ah, well, I see if <laughs> And that's the end of our intro. Anyways, wow, I can see what kind of episode we're about to have. Uh, <gasps> you guys, if you all want to get to know about one of my favorite minor prophets and hear Claire and I make no coherent sense, keep watching today's episode. Mm -hmm. I think... Um, it's going to be fun trying to... Um, hearing you trying to get the names right. No, no, so. me, honey, let's flip it back to Clara. Clara, just switch that camera to you. Uh, Clara, let's give you three attempts to try and say <laughs> the name of the prophet of today's episode. Okay, I have it written here. Okay, they no, see. no. They cannot see. Okay, good. Try and say it. <clears throat> ha have a, have <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait. <what's... laughs> okay, attempt number two. Hab <laughs> Okay, attempt number three. <laughs> wow. That's our glowing star. She's going off to LA. Going to LA spelling bee, hopefully. Uh Habakkuk. Habakkuk? Habakkuk. Habakkuk? 
<laughs> yes. Habakkuk. Prophet Habakkuk. <laughs> How do you say so loosely? How do you say so easily? Like, uh, when to buy tobacco? What the f***? <laughs> Habakkuk. Hab the, you know what the worst part is? Right. I have the spelling written down on my screen. <laughs> it's not even the real name. <laughs> she ha has it spelled out phonetically <laughs> on her screen. Hab Habakkuk. There we go. Now try and say the book of Habakkuk. Yeah, forget it. What the book of Habakkuk? The word of I. The book. The book of the, the book of Habakkuk. <laughs> 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 oh lord what i was telling clara before we started is like that was a rare name for back then too like I, I i mentioned it later on but like no other that's like the only name it was like a celebrity child name like no one named anyone habakkuk like, blue. like even back then exactly blue ivy or, apple, or apple yeah. tangerine like <laughs> no one named these babies <laughs> these names anyways we're gonna get into the book of habakkuk and i Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, did we even talk about anything? I mean, if you haven't enjoyed it so far, you're lost. I know. Because we're having a lot of fun today. I know. We're having, I know, but I wonder if we're the only ones having fun. <laughs> 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 yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to see. When you do it for the love, I feel like we can. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyways, but we don't. We want to do this. We want to do this for money. <laughs> We want to quit our nine to fives. We want to so. quit our nine to fives so that we can go back to making this our full time. I, I don't want to put episodes out late. I don't like that. It feels weird. You know what it feels like to put out episodes late? It feels like it feels like cheap a failure. Yeah. yeah, it feels embarrassing. It feels cheap. It feels like I'm I'm like putting other things ahead of this, and it shouldn't be that way. I know. It should be this ahead of the other things, and then we ask for forgiveness in the other things. You know. I know. I know. Oh, we might have to cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. I accidentally switched to the wrong camera. <laughs> so, came over to me and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Today's going to be a really great episode. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, am I still on ketosis? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this week's story. <laughs> This message is for Clara and any other atheists that consume this show. Habakkuk is for you. That's right. Habakkuk is also for all of us. That literally was this minor prophet's purpose for writing this book. He wrote it to teach us about his learnings to Judah, but also to teach the other nations. These teachings were tailor-made for those who doubt God's goodness and sovereignty during challenging times. Here's some info on Habakkuk. He was active around 612 BC. Now this seventh century time frame is speculative because the book describes the Babylonians or Chaldeans as they were also called during this time. The Babylonians rise to power. Not to mention, normally, prophets get shout-outs in other books, like when rappers reference people in their songs. But Habakkuk doesn't get any shout-outs in any other book. No okay? wonder with this name. <laughs> These rappers were like, okay, Habakkuk rhymes like, with we nothing. Can't even, yeah. <laughs> Can't it. No, anyways. Did they even know how to spell it? Like, it's impossible to reference him. <laughs> but he was so, this book was so good, you know? But that's why I'm saying no one, no, he wasn't referenced. So any information on him, you know, whether personally, like what he did for a living, where he was from, is rare, mm. just like his name. Now we can assume that he was singing his songs around the same time as Jeremiah and Zephaniah. Yes, I say sing, because his poetry sounds melodic, and Ooh. I quite like it. It is assumed he was a member of the tribe of Levi, who served as musicians in Solomon's temple, yada, yada, you guys know. I guess, uh, I don't know, is there anything else I have to give you guys on Habakkuk before we get started? No shoe size, maybe? You've uh, done a very detailed. Um, you know what? Habakkuk seemed like he liked girls who had tattoos. <laughs> and afros. <laughs> T 
tough girl. I'm a tough girl. You do sound, he does sound like someone you would like though. Oh yeah. Zephaniah was, remember the 90s grunge, yeah. uh, Nine Inch Nails, Nirvana. Yeah. Habakkuk seems like he would dress like Bill Gates. Okay. But want a girl who super. is super edgy. So he, like an Elon Musk? Mm. You know his girl was a little cuckoo. Grimes is not cuckoo. I love Grimes. No way. Not Grimes, but she was a little cuckoo. I don't think she's cuckoo. What makes her cuckoo? I think she's a little cuckoo. Moving on to the story. <laughs> oh, moving moving right along. Moving, moving right, right along. along. <laughs> oh my gosh, should we just harmonize? More often than not, prophets translate God's message and provide instructions to the people. Hmm. But in Habakkuk, he is holding it down for the people because he confronts God. Remember, this was right before the Babylonian exile where the Southern kingdom of Judah is riddled with idolaters, adulterers, violence, and overall civil injustice. So yeah, Habakkuk pulls up on God like, what's up? For real. He asks the Lord, where are you? Are you there? Hello? We need answers. I know you're the Lord, but don't you see us? Well, chapter one, we get those answers directly from the Lord himself. Ooh. Hi, TNG. Habakkuk is like a disgruntled tenant who's trying to get repairs in his apartment. Okay? He has two complaints to Yahweh, his landlord. Okay? Let's go to some scripture. All right, we are going to go to Habakkuk chapter uno, verses two to four. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth for the wicked surround the righteous. So justice goes forth perverted. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> Let's get the answer to this complaint right now because it happens right after. Okay. I told you this book is good. Okay, we're gonna go to Habakkuk uh, chapter one verses five to 11. Look among the nations and see, wonder and be astounded, for I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if I told. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation who march through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own. Chaldeans are the Babylonians, by the way. It's another name for them. They are dreaded and fearsome. Their justice and dignity go forth from themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards, more fierce than the evening wolves. Their horsemen press proudly on. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle, swift to devour. They all come for violence, all their face forward. They gather captives like sand. At kings they scoff, and at rulers they laugh. They laugh at every fortress, for they pile up like earth and take it. Then they sweep by like the wind and go on. Guilty men, whose own might is their God. Mm -hmm. The Lord's answer to complaint number one is, okay, Poppy, I hear you. <laughs> and I just want to let you know, that I see what's going on. <laughs> you already know the plan, though. I'm going to use Babylon in order to take down Judah because of their evil and injustice. Okay? We got to burn it down to rebuild it again. Ha! And Habakkuk goes, oh, really? <laughs> okay, what? he hears the answer. And he's like, okay, yeah. Uh, great. Um, I'm familiar with the plan, Lord. <laughs> but why in your name are we using the Babylonians to restore us? The Babylonians are even worse than us. 
They worship violence and evil instead of you. What's not clicking? Is that not a little weird, Lord? Is that not at all concerning? Boom. Here we have a moment that is not uncommon for many believers. Like myself, a moment of doubt. Mm. Our faith is being tested and we mm. bring it to the Lord. How can we see hope when there is so much chaos around us? What's the point? The Lord has an answer for this too. Mm. The righteous should live by his faith. The Lord says, Habakkuk, grab your snacks and write this down. Okay, scripture. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do this. Ooh, I'm, I'm fired up. Ooh, I'm ready. I love the bubble. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 to 5. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him. But the righteous shall live by his faith. Moreover, wine is a traitor, an arrogant man who is never at rest. His greed is as wide as shale. Like death, he is never enough. He gathers for himself all nations and collects as his own all peoples. I just want to repeat this one for, for anyone who needs it. But the righteous shall live by his faith. That's his answer to complaint number two. The Lord reiterates that a righteous man will live by his faith in this hope and vision for a better future. God doesn't work for us. He works through us. The Lord's going to handle the Babylonians. They're not going to be running ish forever. Babylon and every other nation like them will fall too. Uh, this is a high tangy, but not really, because Timothy Mackey over at The Bible Project, if you don't know their YouTube channel, please go over there. Everyone knows about them. Anyone who's anyone knows about The Bible Project. Mm -hmm. Anyways, Timothy Mackey put it perfectly. He said, God may use corrupt kingdoms like Babylon, but that does not mean that he endorses them. God does not have social media. Cancel him all you want. It won't change his holy plans for restoration. Hi, Tangi, again. <laughs> you know, it reminds me that God really does love us more than even we think. We love each other. He loves us even more. You know, he, he, the reason why he's doing this is for reasons that even if he explained to us, we wouldn't believe. I know that there's a percentage of people that understood that. And if you're not one of them, it's okay. Don't worry. I understand. I've been there. You'll get there. You'll get there. Yeah. You'll get there in due time. Keep being in your word. Keep your head down, you know. But it makes sense. He said it to Habakkuk. He said, I'm, I'll, I'll bring it back. I have to. He said in, in chapter one, it, it reminds me of Habakkuk uh, chapter one, verse five. Look among the nations and see, wonder and be astounded, for I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if I told. So trust me, if you don't understand it yet, it makes sense, I get it. Habakkuk didn't even understand, you know? A prophet. Go easier on yourself. All right, babes, the second half of chapter two are the five woes the Lord describes to Habakkuk. Here, the Lord breaks down five forms of injustice that Babylon and other nations like Babylon will be judged for. Hi, Tangie, this is so funny. It reminds me of a parent who's like telling, hey, but he bullied me, he bullied me, you know what I'm saying? And a parent has to be, you know, diplomatic and whatever. But this, is, this reminds me of the Lord being like, hey, listen, 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 just because I'm using them doesn't mean that they're not gonna get punished too, okay? They're wrong, and this is why. The first woe described by the Lord is theft and lust for control. Let's go to some scripture. Habakkuk chapter two, verses six to eight. Woe to him who heaps up what is not his own. For how long? And loads himself with pledges. 
Will not your debtors suddenly arise and those awake who will make you tremble? Then you will be spoiled for them. Because you have plundered many nations, all the remnant of the peoples shall plunder you for the blood of man and violence to the earth, to cities and all who dwell in them. Second woe, greed and unjust gain. Chapter two, verse nine. Woe to him who gets evil gain for his house. That is all Babylon. Babylon, Babylon, Babylon. And I know so many rich people now who've done that. I will never name names. I will just pray for them. Uh, uh, third woe, violence. Anyone who gained power by being abusive, you will be judged for that. Period. Uh, woe number four. Oh. Drunkenness, lust, and corrupting others. <laughs> That one's uh, self-explanatory, Clara, enough, Clara, put, stop it, Clara. It's not okay, I don't want to talk about it, we do not let them declare it, stop it. Um, Whoa, well, number five. Wait, I have a question. Oh boy. <laughs> you said that one's self-explanatory, but I, how is drunkenness, lust, and corrupting others linked together under one, because like, to me, there are three separate bad things, but why are they all falling into one same box or bag? Well, it was just, I mean, I can't, I don't, I, I don't have the answers to that. The Bible divided them in such a way, but I guess it's not self-explanatory. So let me, let's go to some scripture then. Behold, da, 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 da. woe to him who makes his neighbors drink. You pour out your wrath and make them drunk in order to gaze at their nakedness. You will have your fill of shame instead of glory. Drink yourself and show your uncircumcision. The cup in the Lord's right hand will come around to you and utter shame will come upon your glory. What? So these woes are in reference to the Chaldeans, the Babylonians. Uh, if you're wondering why they have two separate names, it's because the Chaldeans, uh, like the earlier days of that part of the Mesopotamian area was named, that that was the name, it was like the, Chal the Chaldean dynasty. Okay. And it wasn't until later that they adopted the Babylonian... They're interchangeable. They're they're the same territory. It's like saying Spanish versus European. Um, right. Sort of. Okay. Does that make sense? Or Catalan and Spanish, maybe? It's like saying Catalan. Because most of the culture yes. and traditions, yes. but there's some different yes. traits. Yes. But are minor. It's a Semitic group. And a Catalan is a Spanish, technically, but a Spanish is not a Catalan. Exactly. There you go. Okay. But it's the same thing. Like right. They yeah, are yeah, Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, oh, number five. If only you guys saw the behind the scenes of this show. <laughs> and here we are. Uh, woe number five, idolatry. Scripture. Uh, Habakkuk chapter two, verses 18 to 20. What profit is an idol when its maker has shaped it? A metal image, a teacher of lies. For its maker trusts in his own creation when he makes speechless idols. Woe to him who says to a wooden thing, awake, to a silent stone, arise. Can this teach? Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Mm. Don't be an idolater. Do you know, to this day, there are like two things, high tangy, not high tangy. I know... It's kind of weird to be hierarchical about sins and transgressions against the Lord. Mm -hmm. But I've read the entire Bible. How many times? Once. Not not like my, full ones and not yeah, on yeah, yeah. And it's not enough because I still go back and I'm like, oh, I forgot that. Oh, I mm. didn't know that. You know? Uh I mean, you're not a robot. So you can fill exactly. through the information, but you're not going to retain everything. Exactly. First. That's why you have to keep doing it. But anywho, if I could come up with two of the, I guess the way the Lord puts it to Habakkuk is uh, woes, the two 
transgressions that I, I, I intuitively feel uh, sit the worst with the Lord, where he has, if he has expressed wrath, anger, rage against, mm-hmm. is idolatry mm-hmm. and hypocrisy. Mm. Though, in my, in my, from from just from what I've compiled and what I understand, those two things they grind his gears good. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. That's just good. I mean that's just bringing to two cents. I'm sure other people may may feel differently, but intuitive intuitively I feel like that's it's those are always the ones that like Lenierva, like hmm. I don't know. Anyhow. That's like, I feel like maybe we haven't gotten there yet, but I don't feel we've spoke about hypocrisy that much. Ooh, honey. However, idolatry I have it very present that we like it keeps coming up repeatedly. So it kind of like I guess it kind of feels like you have seen hypocrisy. I have, but maybe it doesn't say it in the word, so I don't retain it like that. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, maybe that's just a, a over uh, an all encompassing conclusive like hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I were to jumble a lot of things in one umbrella, hypocrisy is the the main thread. Yeah, I'm but how about like idol idolatry? Those words come up a lot, so I guess my brain references it better. The word hypocrisy doesn't come up; uh, it does come up in the Bible, but I not guess, as often though. Yeah. yeah, but just know that's the Brianda. So, would you say, like, now that Brianda's talking, like interpreting? Yeah, that's your interpretation. Would you say that um, idolatry is? I'm going to turn the camera back to you. No, 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 this. go. Okay, I know it's on you. Would you say that one of, like, the reason why the Lord is offended the most, or, like, uh, under your interpretation, obviously, by idolatry to other idols, I, or idolizing other idols, is because it's, like, somewhat related to betrayal? Like, I would, and in my head, I'm thinking, if I was the Lord, and someone was, like, idolizing, idolizing? Idolatrating? Worshipping. Worshipping an idol other than me, I would feel betrayed. Do you think like betrayal is what triggers him to be like so against idolatry or is more, I don't know what, like. Uh, um, I, I can give you my emotional impulse to yeah, this answer. Like I want Rob Rianda. I don't want what the Bible cool. or the text or religion is well, like. I want Rob Rianda. Whatever I say is a product of my Bible reading, but... Fair, but it's your interpretation. Yeah, That's what I, I would say that the reason why, from my experience, idolatry and hypocrisy are at the top of his no-no list uh, is because those uh, seem to be the two transgressions that lead to uh, the influencing of the masses of more corruption. Mm. It seems to be the seed that plants it all, mm. like all. It seems to be the start. So I'm assuming that the Lord is like a doctor almost, and he sees exactly what causes the cancer. And it seems to be that those two things cause the most corruption oh, the in our hearts and, and in turn the most distance from him. All right. I don't know where that came from. I'm just thinking, pretty, but pretty. I think that's that's. I think that's. I think so, and it makes the most sense. It, I, I, you, you kind of high tangy, not high tangy, but, and I feel it in other people too. Uh, uh, hypocrisy makes any like. Let's just say there's a company that's being ran by a CEO who's the biggest hypocrite. Mm-hmm. What is that? What is the morals behind that company? What is it founded under? Right. It's false. It's there's no, it's empty. There's an emptiness. There is no ethical code there. You're a hypocrite. Mm. Like I would see You're spineless. I would see hypocrisy um, linked to abuse. Like when you're a hypocrite, Deception. your rules don't apply to the rest, or you're like kind of abusing, you know, yeah. the other part. And the idolatry, I would say, linked to betrayal. Like the Lord is a jealous God. Yeah, that is betrayal. Could you imagine, like, the Lord wanting so much for you to go to to Him the way Habakkuk 
went to him like, hey, yo, what's good with this? He wants you to go to him mm -hmm. with those things. Not a, not a, 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 a wooden figure, not a rocks that you charge by a window. Mm -hmm. Like go to him, you know, sit and go to him. Anywho. Yeah, I can see that betrayal. You're right. Cool. All right, last chapter. I feel it. I feel like I could give. No, 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 no. Hey! <laughs> no, okay, okay. Yo, who needs a bar when you got this soon? No! I'm not, I'm I bet you I'm on the list of like, if Christians had a list of like, don't the listen to this, <laughs> they'd be like, Bible stories with Brianda, do not listen to that. Yeah. Which is like crazy. Of all the programs that I listen to, my show quotes direct from the Bible the most. Look at that. Uh, a lot of the programs that I listen to, I love, by the way. But they're, it's their interpretation. They're most, m most of it is, uh, yeah, inference. I mean, mine is a combination. Yeah. But if anything, it's more this. And none of them ever, and none of them ever admit when they're wrong. Or um, actually, Tara Lee Cobble at the Bible <laughs> recap, she'll admit when she's wrong with something sometimes, which I really, that's why I respect her and I like her a lot. Who calls her out? Um, I don't know if anyone does. Maybe her researchers or like maybe how, people do. How does she correct? She'll put out other episodes that say corrections. Ooh. She's dope. She's the best. She's dope. I have so much respect for people who say, hey, I, I said wrong. something this one time. I was wrong. Let me re let me fix it. That yeah. is like. Yeah, because no one's perfect. <sighs> love it. Anyways, back to the story. All right, guys, we made it to the final chapter, chapter three of the book of prophet Habakkuk. And let me tell you something, Mr. Happy, happy, cook, cook closes us out with a bang. It's a prayer. And let me tell you something. He should have won a Pulitzer prize and a Grammy for this. Now, if you're someone who has asked man after reading this, when is it ever going to end? Is corruption just a cyclical thing? Will we always be created, destroyed, and then restored? What's even the point of faith? Well, chapter three starts with Habakkuk being like, all right, Lord, I heard you. I wrote everything you said down. I'm gonna learn how to trust you and love you even more deeply so that my faith can be reinforced. But Lord, I need you right now. You've done it before. You can do it again. We all need you right now and tomorrow. So show us, show us the way you showed up at the Egyptians with the Exodus, okay? I'm about to read some scripture and it's long. So grab your snacks. Okay, we're gonna go to Habakkuk chapter three, verses six to 16. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and shook the nations. Then the eternal mountains were scattered. The everlasting hills sank low. His were the everlasting ways. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction. The curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was your wrath against the rivers, O Lord? Was your anger against the rivers? Or your indignation against the sea? When you rode on your horses, on your chariot of salvation? You stripped the sheath from your bow calling for many arrows. Scylla, you split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. The raging water swept on. The deep gave forth its voice. It lifted its hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their place at the light of your arrows as they sped at the flash of your glittering spear. You marched through the earth in fury. You threshed the nations in anger. You went out for the salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed. You crushed the head of the house of the wicked, laying him bare from thigh to neck, Selah. You pierced with his own arrows the heads of his warriors, who came like a whirlwind to scatter me, rejoicing as if to devour the poor in secret. You trampled the sea with your horses, the surging of mighty waters. I hear 
and my body trembles. My lip quivers at the sound. Rottenness enters into my bones. My legs tremble beneath me, yet I will quietly wait for the day of trouble to come upon people who invade us. Yet I will quietly wait for the day of trouble to come upon people who invade us. Hmm. What you guys just heard was only a part of a prayer for a new world, a new exodus in the future. Hi, Tanji, not hi, Tanji. You're hearing all these things. He's basically listing the Lord's resume. Huh. Rejoice in you. We've seen what you've done in detail. He lists them. This is what you've done. This is what you've accomplished. This is what you, you've done this for us. I will wait. I choose, I deliberately choose to believe that you have done this, that you've been the salvation for us. And so I'm choosing to wait. Hmm. He ends the prayer on a deep and powerful note. Okay. Clara, add some ambient music here. Switch up the lights for us, okay? Habakkuk, chapters 17 to 19. Ooh, this is my favorite. You guys, is the end of it. And it is... I'm going to go ahead and say it's it's like top, top 15 verses. Ooh. Habakkuk, yeah. He wasn't there before. Today's recorded, but he's there now. <laughs> He's there now. Just like Micah. Some of these minor prophets just like slip in there like, whoa, hold on. You may not be on the cover of the magazine, but you in the magazine. Habakkuk chapter three, verses 17 and 19. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in, in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. I, I really hope you guys like replay that or read that, read it for yourself with your eyes. Mm -hmm. It's one of those texts that you need to see with your eyes. If you're listening to this on the audio, please go to Habakkuk chapter three, verses 17 and 19. Okay. It denotes that no matter what devastation, war, crime, violence, starvation that surrounds Habakkuk, mm -hmm. he will choose to trust and seek joy in the promises of God, no matter what. Habakkuk is a glowing example of a righteous man, deliberately and intentionally choosing to live by faith. And that, Bible babes, is the end of the book of prophet Habakkuk. Oh. Yep. Moral of the story? Oh, what, Clara? What? 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 I don't know. I, like, I don't know if I'm tipsy and I wasn't paying enough attention. Okay. Or you haven't said it. Because I was responding to a couple of messages when you were reading scripture today. But um, all work related, by the way. Like, it's not like I I'm understand not you're a busy woman. What happened to Habakkuk from. I'm going to record myself just in case we could resume. What happened to Habakkuk from the beginning of the episode where he was like questioning the Lord so much to now switching? to almost the, com the complete opposite and to like trusting him blindly. Because, well, you, you did say at the beginning that we don't know much about his life and like personal details, but like something has to have happened. Habakkuk was not a non-believer. Okay. Habakkuk was a prophet, an anointed prophet. Mm. So that's just a, a clear distinction. Uh, the doubts of someone who believes that Lord is our that the Lord is a sovereign power, uh, is not someone who um, just believes blindly. This is someone who understands the Lord's salvation is in the Lord. The Lord provides us with salvation. Mm -hmm. He understood this. 
He had doubts about his surrounding areas, the chaos and devastation that, that was around him, the corruption. People were burning the Torah, the Bible around him. And he was scared and doubted from that place. So he Chapters was like, one and chapter two are a dialogue between Habakkuk and the Lord addressing those complaints, right? Okay. The Lord provided him with answers. And that's what happened. Those answers were not easy for Habakkuk to just swallow. In fact, there was a, he, he fights back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, after that last one, he says, I need you to write these things down. There, he gave him a mission, a purpose, mm. which is what a relationship with God can do for us. The Lord tells us to bring something, to write something down, this is your purpose. Anyone who's ever pursued their purpose or is working a fulfilling job or is a parent who, who their, their, their kids and their family is what the most fulfilling thing ever, you'll know that that oneness is all the answer you'll ever need, all the motivation you'll ever need. So within that time and in those learnings and when he told him to write them down, he managed to deepen his relationship with the Lord. And the result of that was the decision to, oh, wait, I actually am gonna live by faith. I now know that living by faith is a practice. Mm, okay. That, so that's what happened. It's three chapters. It's a very short book. It's rich. So now let's get into this week's moral of the story. Well, people really, if people were here to see the behind the scenes, it would be hilarious. <laughs> I told you, we have to put a Twitch camera. Something. While we record. Like, this is hilarious, y'all. Y'all don't even know. <laughs> Moral of the story, please. Moral of the story is believe in God anyway. I know someone out there is mad I said that, but it's the truth. The book of Prophet Habakkuk reminded me how much better my quality of life is when I believe in God's covenant promise to humanity no matter the circumstance, no exceptions. Maybe your parents have hurt you for years. Believe anyway. Your spouse is abusive? Believe anyway. You're in crippling debt? Believe anyway. Parts of humanity are living below the poverty line and you feel helpless? Believe anyway. Government overreach? Believe anyway. When things aren't going according to your plans, believe anyway. The Lord is mysterious and will never know the ways of his timing. Point is, our circumstances should never dictate our faith. You have a reason for feeling the way you do, no matter where you fall on the spectrum of belief. You have a reason. You even have a reason for doubt, for struggle. But let this be your reminder that you also have a reason to claim hope. The story of Habakkuk is one of a man who struggled believing in God's plans, but it only deepened his relationship with God. He used that struggle and drew closer to the one that strengthened him the most. He had a reason to believe. So yeah, believe in the plans of God anyway, of a better future, of a new exodus. Believe anyway. Ooh. Hey, Father, let's cut right to the chase. Father, when are we gonna have a boyfriend? I'm waiting, I'm believing anyway, and I just want a boyfriend. Do I have to go to another country like Clara did? Oh, maybe if I go to Europe, maybe if I go to Spain, we'll swap, we'll swap stories and I'll find my, my future husband. What do you think about that? Oh, God.